Hello everyone, Leo Fontana here, and today I wanted to do a video about a situation I was in recently that I think that most Christians either have gone through or will go through at some point. And I really just felt the Holy Spirit's leading to, to do a video on this. Um, hopefully there's a, there's a member of the Brethren who, who this will bless. Maybe there's somebody out there who is, is facing a similar situation, similar decision that I had to make. And, and hopefully um, by what I'm going to talk about today and the scriptures I'm going to go over, hopefully it'll, it'll make that decision easier uh, uh, for, for that brother or sister. So today what I'm going to talk about is recently I had a family member of mine die. And um, this was a family member that I knew very well. Um, it wasn't just somebody who I was related to, it was somebody I was very close to. And he um, was what I would classify or categorize as a non-practicing Roman Catholic. Um, he was brought up Roman Catholic. Um, he um, didn't attend church regularly um, and, and that sort of thing. He didn't participate in the, in the rituals and the witchcraft and that sort of a thing that, that, that makes up Roman Catholicism. But he, he was somebody who would have considered himself a Roman Catholic. And we used to watch um, Midnight Mass when I was a child, uh, many years ago on Christmas Eve. So he was, he was that type of a Roman Catholic. He respected the Pope. He, he, he thought the, the Pope was, was a, or is a, a special human being. Um, but he wasn't somebody who I would, you know, was you know, participating in all the Roman Catholic nonsense. Um, so anyhow, he died. And I was asked to be a pallbearer in his funeral and obviously attend the funeral. Not just myself, but my wife and, and my family. And um, I, you know, I was faced with this decision and I didn't know what to do. Because it, you know, it was one of those things where we were expecting him to die. He was sick. He had a terminal illness. Um, but we didn't know exactly when he was going to die. And it just kind of happened. And, and, you know, when somebody dies, everybody's scrambling to get the funeral arrangements done. And, and you know, they want to make sure everybody's invited and, and get the pallbearers and people that are going to participate in the service uh, secured. So that way they can let the, the uh, funeral home and all that, uh, those people know. So I had a lot of pressure on me to decide, you know, am I going to be a pallbearer? Am I even going to attend? Is my wife going to attend? Is my daughter going to attend? And basically, I just went to the Lord in prayer because, you know, I knew instinctively that I shouldn't um, go because I, I don't participate in Roman Catholicism. Um, those of you who've watched my channel or subscribed to it know that I'm, I'm very honest about what Roman Catholicism is. It's satanic um, and it's evil and it's wicked and has nothing to do with Christianity or the Lord Jesus Christ of the Bible. So I, I have nothing to do with it other than preach against it and try to get people saved out of it. So I was faced with this very difficult decision, though. I mean, obviously, it's a member of your family. So there's, you know, you have people kind of pressuring you and everything. And, and, you know, those of you who've been through that know that those things do come up as a Christian. So I prayed to the Lord. And, you know, I was just, Lord, just, I, I, I think I know what to do here. But I just really want your opinion. I want your guidance, you know. And if you, if you say, hey, just go. He's, he's somebody that you were related to. Go help your family. Then I would. Then I would, you know. Um. I just wanted to know what the Lord thought. So after doing, you know, a lot of prayer to the Lord, um, and, and he just, you know, he provided an answer to me very quickly. One of the quickest answers to prayer I've ever received. Um, you know, those of you who are, you know, you're, you're saved and watching this and you're praying, sometimes it takes months, years to get an answer to prayer. Uh, very, very rarely is in a, like a pretty much immediate thing or within a few hours or even that day. Um, so I kept praying about this and finally the Lord just, you know, through the power of the Holy Spirit, just kept saying, let the dead bury their dead. And it just, and I, and it kept going back to that, let the dead bury their dead, let the dead bury their dead. And I knew instinctively that that was scripture, um, because I remember that, that verse very clearly. It's in the book of Matthew, and we're going to go over it here in a few minutes. But that was the response I was getting, let the dead bury their dead. And that's what the Holy Spirit was telling me. And, you know, at first you try to, or I was trying to go, well, yeah, I know, but, you know, somebody I was related to, you know, remember my family, should I just do it anyway? And, and, you know, if you're honest, you've done that too, you know, where you kind of think, should I, you know, shouldn't I? But then the Lord just kept pounding me with it. Let the dead bury their dead just over and over, you know, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so that's what I want to talk about today is why I let the dead bury their dead. And I did not participate in this funeral. I did not attend. My daughter and my wife did not attend either. 
um, and why I sought the Lord's advice on this. So I want to go through the scriptures that the Lord's talking about here, that the Holy Spirit was talking about when he was saying, let the dead bury the dead. And then I want to go through a whole list of other scriptures that really just confirm um, why I made the decision I did. And before I do that, though, I, I want to preface this by saying that this has nothing to do with salvation. Okay, this is not a salvation issue. You can be saved and attend a Roman Catholic funeral if you want to. We have that liberty. Okay, we are under grace. We're not under the law. You're not saved by works. Okay, um, so I want to preface that. I'm not saying if you're saved and you've ever attended some other type of funeral or a wedding, maybe even for a lost person, that you're not saved or you don't love the Lord. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just wanting to share my experience of how I came to this decision. Um, and I'll be honest with you, you know, back maybe when I first got saved years ago, I probably would have went. Um, but through that sanctification process, staying in the Word, staying in prayer, you know, cleaning things up in my life, wanting to be closer to the Lord, the Lord leads you into those truths. You know, we know from John 16, 13, that the Holy Spirit leads you into all truth, okay? Um, but as the Bible also says, you have to have eyes to see and ears to hear. Okay, You have to want that truth. And as you go through that sanctification process and you grow in, in the Lord, um, you, you learn new things. And the Lord you know, really just put, brought it home to me on, on this. And you know, he didn't say, oh, you can't go, and if you go, you don't have, you know, you're not saved, nothing like that. He just simply said, let the dead bury their dead. And that's all I needed to hear. That was all I needed to hear. I said, okay, Lord, thank you. You know, I, that's all I needed. So I want to go over those verses, and then again, I want to go over some other verses that came to mind that can help you in these kind of situations, because these are difficult situations. You know, you're facing your family, maybe you're facing friends, um, maybe it's a co-worker, a boss, you know, somebody like that who maybe you're feeling pressure to, to participate in, whether, again, if it's a funeral, a, 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 a wedding, something like that. Um, and these things will happen, brethren, and, you know, it, if it hasn't happened, it will happen. So I want to go through some scriptures here, and, and really I just, I pray this is a blessing to you as always, and even more so, because these things are tough to go through as a Christian, and um, so I just want to show you some scriptures here and talk a little bit more about this situation. Um, so first of all, again, I want to go back to that verse of let the dead bury their dead and where that comes from. So if you have your Bible, um, your King James Bible, I want you to go ahead and turn to Matthew chapter 8, verses 19. Through 22. Matthew chapter 8. That's where we're going to start. Matthew chapter 8, and again we're starting at verse 19 and we're going through verse 22. Alright, chapter 8, verse 19. And a certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus saith unto him, the foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And another of his disciples said unto him, unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said unto him, Follow me, and let the dead bury their dead. And that's exactly where the Holy Spirit got this verse. Um, sort of as, as, a, as a side note here, whenever you're praying to the Lord, and you're getting an answer. It, if it comes from Scripture, it's definitely from the Lord. Um, sometimes, you know, we can Satan can mess with us. Unclean spirits can mess with us. Even our own mind. Um, we know from from the Bible that our heart is desperately wicked. So, you know, our our internal uh, workings can can make us think things that maybe we shouldn't think. Um, but when the Holy Spirit answers you from Scripture, it's definitely uh, of the Lord. So that, those are the scriptures right there that I, that I used, or that the Holy Spirit used, rather, to, to help me get through this uh, decision. And it's just very basic. You know, you, you, you go back to verse 19. You know, you, you go through, and it says, A certain scribe came and said unto him, Master, I will follow you where, wherever thou, wh whithersoever thou goest. So you've got a situation where, I mean, this is a scribe, obviously, and we know, reading this from, from the scribes and Pharisees, who they are. Um, uh, Jesus uh, rebukes them as hypocrites and liars. But um, this is a, a very important verse because he's saying, hey, I'll follow you wherever you go. And isn't that what we do as Christians? I mean, that's what we're supposed to do, right? We're supposed to follow the Lord no matter what. And, and that's real easy to do. And it's real easy to say when everything's great and you don't have any problems and, and no situations like, like this one come up. Um, but when these situations come up, you really have to think, am I really willing to follow the Lord no matter what? You know, no matter where it takes me. 
um, as a disciple, obviously, again, not to be saved, but as a disciple, once you are saved, um, being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the Lord talks about, you know, that, look, you know, the foxes have holes, the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. You know, meaning that, look, the animals all have homes. I don't even have a home. Look at me. I'm, I'm God manifest in the flesh, right? Um, and another disciple said unto him, this is verse 21, Suffer me to go first to bury my father. And, and, you know, when I read that verse, it really makes me think, don't, don't we always do that as Christians, you know, where we say, the Lord says, hey, I want you to do this. And you say, oh, okay, I'll get to that later, Lord. i got to do these other things. I know I've done that, and I still do that. And it's something that I struggle with all the time. Um, I think if you're honest as a Christian, you do too. You know, and that's something we need to get better at, and we need to continue to work on. Um, and verse 22, Jesus said unto him, follow me and let the dead bury their dead. The Lord makes it very simple. Hey, Follow me. Don't worry about the dead. And he's meaning the dead bury their dead, meaning let the dead, let those that are dead in trespasses and sin, let the lost bury their lost. Okay? And that's what he's talking about there. Um, and that's difficult to do. My whole family's lost. Um, so, it, you know, everybody at the funeral's lost. The, 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 my uh, uh, family member is going to be buried at a Roman Catholic cemetery with a lost priest giving the, the ceremony. I, I just, I could not sit there and listen to that that wicked devil uh, speak. I just couldn't do it. You know, I, I just physically could not be there. Um, and so, anyway, this is, again, this is the passage the Lord used to really help convict me on this and make me uh, realize that I, I needed to not attend. Um, and I made the right decision. I feel completely at peace with it. Now, I want to look at a couple of, of or, or a few other verses here that can really help you in these types of situations where you think, wow, you know, I follow the Lord, I love the Lord, I'm a disciple of the Lord, I want to do everything He wants me to do, but I've got this pressure from my family or from my friend or, or from, you know, a co-worker. And we all are have gone through this in some way, shape, or form. And nobody's perfect. And I've succumbed to this pressure before, I'll be honest with you. And I think most Christians have. Um... But we gotta, you know, we gotta get better at it, and we gotta keep, you know, getting closer to the Lord, staying in the Word, staying in prayer, um, and listening to the Lord when He guides you, even when it is a little scary or you're a little unsure. Um, let's go ahead and look at Matthew, stay in Matthew rather, and I want to look at chapter 16 here. Um, and I also forgot to, to say in the beginning of this video, we're going to be looking at different scriptures all throughout the Bible, and the way the Holy Spirit having put this together. I'm going to be kind of zigzagging. So I'm going to stay in the New Testament. I'll go to Old Testament, go back to New Testament. Um, I'm not really sure why, but that's just the way it came together. Um, so, you know, you can pause this if you need time to, to switch to a different part, or if you have pulled up maybe a, one of the free uh, online Bibles, like Gateway Bible, something like that, you can definitely pause the video and check, okay? I want you to follow along with this to see what I'm saying here. Um, and also, maybe if you're one of those people who's newer to the Bible and does, doesn't really know the structure, this is a great way to learn the Bible, um, knowing where those books are, going through it, you know, going to the Old Testament, the New Testament, back and forth, looking up verses. Um, so again, you know, that's just the way this story, this uh, this um, video and, and this message came together. All right. So again, uh, Matthew chapter 16. I want to look at verse 24 and 25. Matthew 16, verse 24 and 25. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall, for my sake rather, shall find it. Um, great piece of scripture there. And the Lord's saying, hey, you know, if you want to be a disciple, again, not to be saved, but if you want to be a disciple of mine, um, if any man, okay, nobody's special, right? Jesus is God. He, he's no respecter of persons. Um, so if any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Deny yourself. Deny those feelings like I had where I was worried about what my family would think of me, what my friends would think of me. Um, you know, how could you not go to this person's funeral who was such a big part of your life when you were a kid and, and such. Um, and, and it, you know, again, in my lost life, I'm not as a saved uh, person. Um, so that, you know, those thoughts do cross your mind. And then verse 24 is the important part. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall, for, for my sake shall find it. And brethren, when you get saved, that's exactly what you do. You lose your life here on earth, in, in, in this world, in this wicked, just sick world that's run by Satan right now. You lose your life here um, 
but you find it with the Lord. You find what what life really is. You find what your life really is. Um, I know, you know, as being saved, I've looked back on my lost life, and I had no life before I was saved. Um, you know, I was dead in trespasses and sin, as the Bible said. Spiritually dead, obviously, not physically dead. Um, but I had nothing until I until I met the Lord Jesus Christ, and so He saved me um, that uh, that day. So these these uh, verses are, are very powerful. You know, you've got a choice, and you know, if you if you really want that life, if you really want um, to follow the Lord, you've got to make some tough decisions sometimes. But remember. The Lord's always there. He's always right by your side. He doesn't leave you and walk away and, and tell you you're on your own. So you've always got Him there. And then if you've got people that are close to you, that are saved, you know, hey, praise the Lord. You've got family that you can lean on to for help, or friends, or spouse, or children. Do that too. You know, we, we all need each other in the body of Christ. So, um, great verses there. I want to turn to Luke. So we go Matthew, Mark, Luke. Luke is the third gospel, and I want to turn to four, or excuse me, chapter fourteen, and I want to look at verse twenty-six through thirty-five. Um, these are some verses that you know I'd read over a lot, and I didn't really get the significance of them um, until you know here recently, uh, a few months back, and they're very powerful. So I want to go over these. So uh, Luke chapter fourteen, verse twenty-six. Um, and we'll go through 35, where God says, If any man come after me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. That is a tall order, brethren. And I've known Christians, and these, and I'm talking about saved people, not professing you know, lost, worldly, modern Christians. I've known saved Christians who very much struggle with this verse right here. Because it is difficult. You know, it, it's so difficult to say, hey, if I want to follow the Lord, I have to be willing to put all these things on the altar. You know, my own mother, my father, my child, my wife, brother, sister, whoever. Um, not that you have to get rid of them in order to follow the Lord. Not like you can't be a disciple if you, you know, if you have a relationship with them. But you have to be willing, if necessary, if it comes to that, to make that decision. Um, very difficult verse, and I've struggled with it myself. Um, verse 27, And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? You ever do that, brethren? Where, where, you, where you don't count the cost? You know, I think when we get saved, it's such a wonderful thing. And praise the Lord for providing us, for, for having that grace to provide us that opportunity to put our faith in Him and get saved by His precious blood that He shed on, on Calvary's cross. Um, but when you look at it, you know, it's it, it, we don't always count the cost of being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's a cost to that, by the way. Um, if you're a disciple of the Lord and you're following His leading, it's going to cost you things. And if you're watching this and you're saved, it's already cost you things. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You've probably lost family. You may have lost jobs. Maybe your neighbors don't like you. Maybe people in your town don't like you because you preach the gospel, because you tell the truth. Um, this world hates truth. And if you tell the truth of, of the Bible and of the Lord Jesus Christ being the way, the truth, and the life, and all other ways of false and of Satan, uh, people are not going to like you. Um, you know, and and not just because of this situation with my family, but even before that, um, my family had, you know, my wife's family, my family pretty much don't want to have anything to do with us. They haven't for a long time, um, because we are saved, and because we have that light of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have the Lord living inside of us. They know that, and they're lost, and they hate the Lord. So they they've wanted to have nothing to do with us for a long time, um, and even now, you know, not not participating in this. Uh, and this Roman Catholic funeral, they, they hate us even more. So just something to keep in mind. Um, we were at verse 29. Lest happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold, behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. So think about that, brethren. You know, when you don't want to you don't want to be in the situation where you don't count the cost, you know? And it's going to be a process. There's going to be those things that come up, and you stumble through them. But you get through them, the Lord's right there to help you. When you fall, He's right there to pick you back up. And you grow, and you grow, and you go through this process of sanctification, and you just get better and better with the Lord's help. 
Um, it's amazing. Let's look at verse 31. Or what king go, go, to war, go to make war against another king, sitteth down first, and consulteth whether he be able with ten thousand um, to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand? Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth, he sendeth an embassage, and, desi and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Yeah, amen. Um, if you're not willing to forsake all that you have, you cannot be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. You cannot be someone who follows him unless you're willing to put it all on the altar, as I had said earlier. Um, and again, you may not have to put it all on the altar, but you may have to put everything you have to follow the Lord. Um, and think about the Lord, you know, when he came to, to the, the earth the first time. He put everything he had, right? I mean, he, he put it all. He gave his life. He was tortured to death on the cross for us. Um, to provide us a way to be saved. And most of the people that he did this for hate his guts and could care less about him. I mean, it's such an amazing thing the Lord Jesus Christ did for us. Um, so I don't think it's asking a lot if we want to follow him and be a disciple and learn from him. And have him there every day and, and have him speak to us and have him show us truth. Um, it's not a big thing to put all this w worthless, um, earthly nonsense, quite frankly, on the altar for him. Looking at what he did for us. Verse 34, salt is good, but if the salt have lost its savor, where, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think that's a great description of us, you know, as, as Christians. You know, if, if we don't have that salt, you know, if we don't have that, that flavor, if we don't have that, that, um, that spike, if you will, for the Lord, if we don't have that seasoning, you know, what good are we as a Christian? And again, it's not salvation. Okay, salvation, we're talking about a separate issue. I'm just talking about discipleship. Um, how can we serve the Lord if we're if we're like we're using here salt that's lost its flavor you know if you if you go to sit down to eat and you go to use your salt and it has no flavor you're going to throw it out it's worthless it has no good to you and we're no good to the lord as disciples of his if we don't have that flavor you know if we don't have that 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 spark that essence if you will so um a uh, tough piece of scripture there but definitely a piece of scripture that uh, we need to adhere to I want to go ahead and look at 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. And I want to look at chapter 3, and I just want to look at verse 12. Very familiar verse if you know your Bible, but I do want to turn to it to make sure that I'm using the Bible and not just quoting it um, out of my memory. So we got, um, excuse me, that's 1 Timothy. We've got 2 Timothy, uh, chapter 3. And we're going to go to verse 12. So 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. Word of God says, um, Word of God says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall, shall suffer persecution. Amen. If you live for the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be persecuted in some way, shape, or form. And, you know, if you're watching this and you are saved and you do follow the Lord, you've already been persecuted, I'm sure. I'm sure you're thinking about cases where, you know, again, maybe your family, friends, neighbors, co-workers, um, persecution comes in a lot of different forms. So if you stand for the Lord Jesus Christ, the lost world will hate you, and they're going to come after you at some point, in some way, okay? Um, and that's just the way it goes. Let's go ahead and look at Psalm. Um, excuse me, I want to look at Psalm, the book of Psalms, but Psalm 119. This is one of the greatest, in my opinion, one of the greatest pieces of scripture. And I've said before, I don't have a favorite piece of scripture. I don't have a, a favorite book of the Bible because I just love them so much. Um, but this, you know, Psalm 119 is about the Word of God. And it's, um, and it's the longest uh, chapter in the Bible. It's a psalm, but, you know, it's a considered a chapter. It's a, a group of the psalms. The book of Psalms, but in in, um, in Psalm 119, I want to look, and again, it's a very long chapter, so I want to look at verse 97. So I want to look at verse 97, and I want to look at through 104. So verse 97, this is Psalm 119, verse 97. 
Oh, how love I thy law! It is my meditation all the day. Th though through thy commandments hast made me wiser than my enemies, for they are for they are ever with me. Don't you feel that way when you read the the word of God and you and you hear what the Lord's telling you? It's always with you. You know, it just it, it's not something where you just read it and put it on the bookshelf and you say, "Wow, I've read the Bible, great." No, it becomes a part of you. You know, this book speaks to you if you're saved and you're reading it. Um, it, it speaks to you, and it becomes a part of who you are. It's just absolutely incredible the way the Lord does this. Verse 99, I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way, that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey in my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Amen. This, I'm telling you, brethren, read this whole chapter if you haven't. It, it is absolutely a blessing. And I want to key on verse 104 here, because this is really the key. It says, through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Through the Bible, through the Word of God, if you're reading this word, if you're reading the Word and and you're saved, the Holy Spirit is teaching you everything you need to know. You're gaining understanding, um, and it says, "Therefore, I hate every false way." Well, if you're saved and you know the Bible, you know Roman Catholicism is false. It's not in the Bible. You don't find any any of it in the Bible. You know, and we could go on and on about that, but you know what I'm talking about. If you're saved. Um, and, you're, and it says, therefore, I hate every false way. Hate. Yeah, I hate Roman Catholicism. Not Roman Catholics. No way. I think Roman Catholics can get saved, and they can get out of that system. And there are, and you should witness to them, absolutely. I'm talking about the system, the papacy, the, 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 the Satanism that takes place in, in, in that system. And it just destroys people. It takes everything they have. I mean, when they're here on earth, it takes their money, it takes their time, it takes their soul. Um, it's a wicked system, brethren. And if you love the Lord and you're saved, you should hate it too. Um, so again, you know, a lot of people don't don't get these pieces of scripture. This is a tough piece of scripture. It's not, you know, like the ecumenical movement that, that Rick Warren pushes in the Grand Clan, where we're just all supposed to come together and, you know, if you're a Catholic, it's okay because we both love Christ and all this other nonsense. No, they don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. Their Christ is not the Christ of the Bible. It's a false Christ. It's an antichrist. You're not supposed to love. Um, Islam and Catholicism and Mormonism and all these other cults. You're supposed to love the Lord Jesus Christ. You're supposed to love the Bible. Um, you're not supposed to love these false ways. You're supposed to hate them. And that's what the Bible clearly says there. Just going over some scripture. Alright, let's go ahead and look at let's go back to the New Testament. Again, I said we were going to zigzag through the, through the Bible here and, and the Lord had me prepare it this way and that's the way I'm going to do it. Let's go ahead and look at, at uh, chapter 6, Matthew chapter 6, um, and I want to look at verse, um, let's see, 19. So Matthew chapter 6, I want to look at verse 19, and I want to look through verse uh, 24. So Matthew 6, verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through or steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the, of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. This is a very key verse that I, I read over for a long time, not really seeing the significance of it until the Holy Spirit um, uh, communicated that to me. Um, when it says the light of the body is, is the eye, if, the, if therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. The eye be single, meaning that if you have the one way, Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, um, you will be filled with the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, not ecumenism. Ecumenism is satanic. We're not. We don't all worship the same God. We're not all. Um, um, we're not all brothers and sisters, like the Pope had recently said that Muslims and Christians are brothers and sisters. Uh, no, Muslims are his brothers and sisters because their father is Satan. Because they're all lost. Certainly is not mine. 
um, my brothers and sisters of the body of Christ, um, not a lost Muslim or a lost Roman Catholic or any other uh, religion. Um, so that's a very important verse that, again, I personally have read over several times and not, um, not really sought the significance. Verse 23, But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Absolutely. And you see this in lost people. They're just filled with darkness and wickedness. They have no light in them. And when you come along and you have the light of Christ, they don't want to see it. I mean, it's almost, it, they, they almost go like this in some ways because they just don't want that light shining on them. And the Bible talks extensively about darkness being related to, to wickedness and, and being related to Satan and light, being related to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, verse 24, No man can serve two masters, this is key, for, e for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Amen. And mammon being uh, on the, uh, or, or being, um, meaning rather, money, the world system, that sort of a thing. So you cannot serve God and serve the world, basically. You can't do it. And, you know, there are times, and again, brethren, I'm confessing today, okay, I'm not perfect. I do this too. Where I be, where I even you have tried to do both, you know, where you say, oh, well, I can still, you know, I'm a Christian and it's okay and I'll just go do this thing and I'll be a part of this. And you, you know, again, you're not going to lose your salvation, but how can you really serve the Lord um, to, to your fullest and, and serve Him in the best way you can if you're participating in stuff like Roman Catholicism? You can't do it. Um, and you know you can't do it. And you get that conviction from the Holy Spirit if you've ever tried it. Again, I, have, I speak from experience. Let's go back to the book of Luke. So we're staying in the Gospels. Book of Luke, chapter 6. I want to look at verse 22, chapter 6, verse 22, book of Luke, uh, chapter 6, verse 22. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Amen. I know I've been there several times. And if you, again, if you're watching this and you're saved, you've definitely been in that situation where people want nothing to do with you. They want to separate from you. You know, it's like, sometimes when we get saved, we worry. You know, like, oh, are people not going to like me? Are they going to not want to be around me? And, brethren, if you're saved, you don't have to worry about it. You won't separate from them. They'll separate from you before you even get a chance to separate from them. And, you know, we, we've lost, like I said, our whole family, basically, and nearly all of our friends, um, because we got saved and, and because we, we serve the Lord. Um, and because we followed the Lord's leading here to Idaho, um, most people that know us think we're, we're lunatics, quite frankly, for doing it and want nothing to do with us. So, a uh, powerful verse, and, 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 and I love the way that this verse talks about blessed are ye. Not, you know, oh, poor you, that's so sad, you had to lose people to follow the Lord, oh, that's just, that's just horrible. No, you're blessed to have lost these people, these wicked people that just want to pull you down to where they are pull you down to the pit of hell, essentially. You're blessed for that. And, on, and you know, it's not like you just let them go. You witness to them, you try, um, but you get to a point where you just don't cast your pearl before swine anymore, as the Lord Jesus Christ said. You witness to them, you present the gospel, and when their heart isn't right, you move on to somebody else, and you pray for them, you plant that seed, and, and, and pray that it turns into something. Um, but they have their part as well. Let's go ahead and look at 2 Corinthians. So we're going to go forward, stay in the New Testament. Let's go forward here to, there's 1 Corinthians and 2, right before you get to Galatians. Um, I want to look at chapter 6. So 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and I want to look at verse 14 through 18. So chapter 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord, concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? These are tough verses, brethren, but you know, if, if you know these verses, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You, when you're saved, you don't have any reason to have fellowship with lost people. You witness to them, sure. You, you, you talk about the Lord Jesus Christ. You give glory to God. Absolutely. But you have to realize that you don't have a place with, with lost people when you're saved. 
you know, this is what always just just totally just makes me laugh, quite frankly, about the modern church. And you, you drive by these church buildings and see these signs that say, everyone welcome. That's a direct violation of the Bible. And before, if you're one of those that's thinking, oh, well, because you've probably heard this satanic lie, that this is talking about marriage. It absolutely isn't talking about marriage because Paul covers that um, in the book already. It's already been covered. Okay, this is talking about fellowship. Okay, this is talking about sitting down with lost people. And specifically, this is talking about sitting down with lost people in, in a congregation type situation, in, a, in, a, um, in, a, in an assembly. Okay, there are no church buildings in scriptures. This isn't talking about that. The modern church building is not of the Lord. It's of Satan. Uh, but what it's talking about here is having that communion, having that fellowship of people that are lost. And you can't do it. And Paul, and Paul even asked the question, you know, um, in verse 15, what part hath he believed with an infidel? What, what part do you have? What purpose is there? How can you be best friends or, or be close to people that are lost and reject the Lord Jesus Christ? You love the Lord Jesus Christ if you're saved, or you should. How can you, how can you be friends and, and spend your life with people that hate him, that have rejected him, um, and that worship Satan, whether they know it or not? Um, so some, some powerful verses. Let's go ahead and finish it off. Because um, we're going through verse 18, um, 16. And, and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? Or For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Amen. You are the church building, brethren. Not, not the building with the cross on top, um, you know, in the downtown section of your local community. No, that's of Satan. You are the, the church building. We are the temple of God. Nobody else. Uh, Save brethren is what I'm uh, referring to specifically here. Um, verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Amen. Come out from among them. This, this has a couple of different meanings, in my opinion. One is, obviously, if you're in a church building, if, you're, if you are yoking with lost people, get out of it. Run to the nearest exit. Run. Don't walk. Get out of it. Because, believe me, they are nothing but a temple of Satan. They have nothing to do with the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're saved, I guarantee you the Holy Spirit is telling you that right now, if you're in one, or has told you that, and you're just choosing to ignore him. Um... And look at, again, verse 18. And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord. Yeah, come out from among them and be with me. Get, come out from among them and get saved. Be one of the Lords. Don't be in that group. Don't be yoking with lost people. Don't be yoking um, in, a, in a church building with, with lost people or professing Christians. It's not what the Lord wants for you. Um, if you're saved, run to the nearest exit. Um, so again, very powerful piece of, of scripture there. You know, you can't be connected to these lost people. And I understand there's lost people. You know, everybody works with lost people. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about your neighbor that you drive up, you know, and you say hello to when you pull in, you know, after work. I'm not saying that. I'm not, I'm not talking about double separation like some lunatic Calvinist or something. What I'm talking about is in, in, in being close, in fellowship, having connection, you know, uh, participating in things together. You have no business doing that. Um, witnessing, yes, but once they reject the Lord, um, you have no, no uh, business yoking with them, according to the scripture. Not me talking, but the Bible. All right, let's go ahead and look at Matthew. So we're going to go back. I told you we're going to be zigzagging through Scripture here. So let's go to Matthew 23. And I love this chapter, brethren, because the Lord just puts it all out and just tells the Pharisees what they are and, and who they are. I love this piece of Scripture. And this is one that most modern Christians have never heard because their lost pastor won't preach it in their building because they preach this peace, love, and rock and roll phony uh, Jesus uh, who's really the Antichrist that they preach, not the Jesus of the Scriptures, not the Jesus of the King James Bible. Um, but in Matthew 23, you get to see who Jesus is. You know, um, Jesus isn't just this peace, love, and rock and roll guy. Remember, Jesus came here with a sword. He came here to divide. Um, and he makes it very clear what he thinks of organized religion in this chapter. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. I'm just going to read a few verses here. Um, but please read this chapter if you haven't. It's absolutely... Uh, beautiful. I'm going to look at verses 1 through 4. 
So, Matthew chapter 23, verse 1. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore, all therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and greet and grievous to the and grievous to the born, and lay them on man's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. And the reason I picked these verses um, is because Jesus is obviously saying these people are hypocrites. Um, they they say one thing and they do another, um, which is a, an absolute picture of organized religion. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not going to go into that in this video, but you know what I'm talking about if you ever attended a church building. But what I'm talking about here, is, or what the the Lord's talking about here, is is that you can't be, you can't say one thing and do another. And for me to be a a a preacher of the Word of God, somebody who follows the Lord Jesus Christ, who preaches against the evils of Roman Catholicism, I could not go and be part of some Roman Catholic funeral, even though it was somebody who was in my family and was very very close to, I knew very well. Um, I had to make a choice, and I can't. You know, I, I, you can't do that. You can't go and preach against something and then be a hypocrite and be part of it. Um, you you can't be as the Lord says here um, that. Uh, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. You know, if I'm telling you out there, my audience, those that are, that subscribe to my channel and watch my videos, if I say I have nothing to do with Roman Catholicism, it's wicked and evil, preach against it. Uh, witness to Roman Catholics, try to get them saved, and then I go and I participate with them and, and say it's okay? No, I can't do that. I won't do that. Um, it's hypocrisy. Um, and we've got enough hypocrisy in the world, especially in organized religion. And, you know, on some level, we all have hypocrisy, and it's something we need to work on. So I'm not going to add to it by purposely being part of something that is so wicked and so evil. All right, let's go ahead and turn to First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. Chapter 5. So we're going to look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And I want to look at one verse, very short verse, very simple. I'm only turning to it because I want to stay in the Word of God. I want to read it right from the Word of God when I tell you. Alright, so 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Amen. I think it would have been, in a, I would have been giving an appearance, right, at, at this funeral, okay? I don't want to show anything that has to do with evil. Again, what I'm trying to say is I don't want to be a part. I don't want to give the impression that I'm okay with the wickedness of Roman Catholicism. I'm absolutely not okay with it. And because I have so many members of my family that are Roman Catholics, and as, as again, I had said earlier, as a child, I had I'd been to Roman Catholic weddings, to funerals. I understand this wicked system. Um, and I know that it's wicked and evil, and I don't want to have anything to do with it. I don't want to have the appearance of it. I don't even want to get close to it, because I know what it is, and it's Satanism. Um, so, you know, very powerful verse there. I want to look at James. So let's go ahead and turn to the book of James, chapter 1. And I want to look at verse 5 through 8. So, again, chapter 1, verses 5 through 8, book of James. If any, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. Amen. I asked the Lord for wisdom. I prayed, and I said, Lord, I need help with this. I, I, just, I need to know what you want me to do. I, I need to know what your will is for me. And boom, he answered it and gave me what I needed. Absolutely true. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like... A wave of the sea driven driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Amen. You have to come to the Lord in pure absolute faith, without wavering. You can't just be thinking, oh, I'll just go see what God thinks, but I'm going to do whatever I want. No, you got to come to him and you got to say, Lord, I'm asking you for your will. And if you tell me, hey, go ahead and go, I'm going to go. If you tell me, don't go, I'm not going to go. And that's the way you have to, in other words, you don't make up your mind, you let you let the Lord's will guide your decisions. And that's what we're talking about here. Let's look at verse 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Amen. Um, 
great example uh, of that are, you know, I mean, we've got tons of these these uh, mega church pastors, these America's pastors that we talk about all the time, the Warren, Rick Warren, excuse me, the Graham clan, the Joe Osteen, all these frauds, you know, all these ministers of Satan, um, they're double-minded. You know, they talk out of both sides of their mouth, especially Rick Warren. Uh, he says he's a Christian, he follows the Lord Jesus Christ, but yet he, he's yoked up with Islam. Yet he's yoked up with Roman Catholicism. You can't do that if you're saved. If you follow the Lord Jesus Christ, you're not going to do that. So, I mean, he's obviously a minister of Satan and lost. I'm just using that as an example. He's a double-minded man. Um, and as the Bible says, he's very unstable. And uh, if you've ever looked into him, you know that. And, and the Graham clan, too. Billy Graham and his, his wicked children as well. And Joe Osteen. Whew. We don't even, you don't have to be, have much discernment to know that guy is a very disturbed lunatic. All right, let's go ahead and look at the last piece of scripture here I want to look at, which is 1 Corinthians. So we're going back. We're zigzagging through scripture, and I hope that you are enjoying it. Let's look at chapter 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. So 1 Corinthians... And it's going to be after Romans. And I want to look at chapter 6. And I just want to look at one verse. Uh, verse 12. So 1 Corinthians 6 verse 12. It says, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Amen. The Apostle Paul, incredible piece of scripture he writes there. Yeah, all things are lawful, brethren. If you're saved, you can go to a Roman Catholic funeral if you want to. You can go to a Roman Catholic wedding. You can go to a Muslim wedding. You can go to your Muslim neighbors and, and hang out and, and you know do whatever you want. Have a barbecue, eat dinner. Fine. It doesn't matter. You're not going to lose your salvation is what I'm talking about. Okay. I don't mean to say it doesn't matter. Um, but you're not going to have good fellowship with the Lord if that's the kind of thing you're doing. Um, and as Paul says there, all things are lawful. Absolutely. Again, we're not under the law. We're under grace. Um, you're not going to lose your salvation for participating in that sort of thing. But, as he says, but all things are not expedient. Okay? The, the, you're, you're not going to, nothing good is going to come out of doing something like that. Um, and that's what he's saying there. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Amen. So if you start participating in these things, especially things like like Roman Catholicism and, 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 and other uh, satanic religions, they can, even though you're saved, they can begin to have a, a hold on you. And there are people that get under a, quite a bit of deception. Um, I've known Christians that are saved, and, and they think, you know, again, it doesn't last forever, but there are periods where they'll start to think, you know, maybe Roman Catholics are Christians, and maybe it's okay, and, you know, maybe Allah and, and God are the same. and you know. But if they're saved, obviously the Lord, the Holy Spirit will lead them in all truth. But you can get deceived by this wickedness. So stay away from it, brethren. That's my advice. Again, go to the Lord in prayer. Okay, My purpose in making this video is not to tell you, hey, this is what I did and you have to do this or you're not a good Christian. Not at all. Um, I've made plenty of mistakes as a Christian and I continue to make mistakes and I fall short every day. Um, as the Bible says, we all will fall short of the, of the glory of God. But I made this video to share my experience with you um, to hopefully guide you into the scriptures, if you have a situation like this, to guide you to the Lord Jesus Christ for your help. Um, don't take my word for it. If you're in a situation like this, if you're feeling, you know, like, you know, maybe I should succumb to pressure, maybe I should be part of something, again, it could be your family, it could be at work, um, go to the Lord in prayer. See what His will for your life is. And be completely ready to do what He says, whether you want to or not. And, and it will be so rewarding, brother. And like I said, I am at complete peace in my decision to not attend this funeral and not be part of it. Um, there's no part of me that feels guilty or feels bad. Um, you know, as I had said, my family is very angry with me about it. Um, far more angry than I think they're letting on. Um, you know, friend, well, not really friends, but friends of the family, I should say, too. Um, and I've taken a lot of heat over this, and my, my wife has, too. Um, but it's what we had to do because it's what it's what the Lord wanted us to do. Um, so, you know, again, I just wanted to put together this video. Um, I, I, I pray it was a blessing to you. I pray that the scriptures were helpful. Um, if you're in a situation like this, again, go to the Lord, go to the scriptures. Um, the Lord, you know, the, the Holy Spirit will lead you in all truth. The Lord will never forsake you. He'll never leave you. He's always there. 
all you got to do is call upon the name of the Lord. Um, so again, I, I sincerely pray this was a blessing to you. And as always, may the Lord Jesus Christ bless you.